Welcome to the HR 2.02 Workforce Harassment, Discrimination, and Retaliation Prevention Training for Volunteers. In this course, we will review important terms in the Human Resources Administrative Rule 2.02. This training will give you tools and resources to identify, address, and report workplace harassment, discrimination, or retaliation. If you are a city employee, please log into City Learner to register for the HR 2.02 Workforce Harassment, Discrimination, and Retaliation Prevention Training to ensure you meet city training requirements. The city goal is to prevent inappropriate behavior in the workplace, address inappropriate behavior in the workplace, ensure employees understand intent of the rule and responsibility, communicate how to respond and report inappropriate behavior, encourage a safe and respectful workplace. State and federal laws prohibit a variety of inappropriate conduct in the workplace. Human Resources Administrative Rule 2.02 goes beyond state and federal requirements to ensure all employees have a safe, professional, and respectful workplace. HR 2.02 is one of the human resources critical rules and can be found on the administrative rules page located on the Bureau of Human Resources webpage. This applies to all elected officials, employees, interns, paid or unpaid, volunteers and applicants for employment with the City of Portland, as well as contractors providing services to the City of Portland, such as outside vendors or consultants. City employees and volunteers are expected to support efforts to maintain a professional workplace. To help you better understand your responsibilities, we'll review some key terms. Protected statuses include age, race, and national origin, source of income, mental and physical disabilities, religion, marital family status, gender, veteran status, sexual orientation, and gender identity, and any other protected status under the law. Harassment qualifies as severe or persistent comments, actions, or behaviors that are threatening, insulting, intimidating, or discriminatory to create a hostile work environment or results in a tangible employment action such as hiring, firing, or demotion. The results may or may not include physical or economic injury for the victim. A single incident may qualify if sufficiently severe, including unwanted physical contact, a threat of adverse action as part of the demand for sexual favors. Harassment may derive from a supervisor or manager, agent, or contractor, coworker, volunteer, or citizen. The HR 2.02 policy defines harassment as inappropriate verbal or physical conduct, which may include conduct that is derogatory or shows hostility towards an individual related to the individual's protected status, the intent or consent of the persons engaging in the inappropriate conduct, or whether the person toward whom the inappropriate conduct is directed is aware of it does not matter. Sexual harassment is defined as unwanted sexual advances, requests for sexual behaviors, or other sexually oriented verbal or physical conduct. Sexual harassment may include unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual behaviors, and other verbal or physical conduct of a sexual nature constitute sexual harassment when this conduct explicitly or implicitly affects an individual's employment unreasonably interferes with an individual's work performance or creates an intimidating, hostile, or offensive work environment. Discrimination is unequal or different treatment of an individual in any personnel action on the basis of protected status. Retaliation is taking a negative personnel action or creating a hostile work environment against an employee who reported discrimination or harassment or who supported an investigation. It's a form of punishment for coming forward with a complaint or reporting inappropriate behavior whether or not the complaint or the report was substantiated. Some examples include experiencing negative job action such as demotion, suspension, failure to hire or consider hiring, failing to treat impartially when making employment decisions, undesirable job assignment, 
shunning. Inappropriate conduct is any other comment, action, or type of behavior not already mentioned that is not conducive to creating and maintaining a respectful and professional work environment for employees. Conduct may be intentional or unintentional, but negatively impacts another employee. Prohibited inappropriate conduct may be verbal, written, and or graphic materials or physical contact. In addition, inappropriate conduct may also take place on social media using personal and or city provided devices. Examples may include use of epitaph, innuendos, names, comments, foul language, or slurs regarding an individual's protected status, whether in written or oral form. Jokes, pranks, or other banter, including stereotyping because of the protected status. Physical touching or contact with any intimate body parts. Unwelcome physical touching or contact, such as unwelcome hugs or touches. Using sexual innuendos, sharing racist, sexist, or sexual stories. Making suggestive comments, gestures, or actions. Sexual propositions, requests for sexual favors, graphic commentaries, suggestive or insulting sounds. Refusing to take no when requests for social interaction or dates are refused. Sharing inappropriate images, videos, emails, texts, or instant messaging. Making remarks about an individual's skin color or other ethnic traits. Making offensive reference to an individual's mental or physical disability. Knowing these key terms will help you identify and avoid inappropriate behavior. It is your responsibility to follow the city's rules at workplace settings. According to HR 2.02 rule, Anywhere you perform any part of your job is a workplace setting. If you are representing the city, all workplace rules apply, even if you are off-site or at an off-site location. Some examples include mandatory meetings held off-site, conferences attended as part of your job or as a representative of the city, events sponsored by the city, events paid for by the city, events attended as a representative of the city, any occasion in which city business is conducted, assigned city property such as a vehicle, a location where city work is performed, for instance, a street repair location. Now that you reviewed each key term and workplace settings, let's cover some additional important information. If you are experiencing inappropriate behavior, you have some options. Talking. If you feel comfortable doing so, talk to the other person in a clear and direct manner. You may find that the person is simply unaware that the behavior is offensive. Report. Report the behavior either by talking with your supervisor, if you're uncomfortable talking directly with the coworker about an issue or concern. If your supervisor is the source of the inappropriate behavior or you are uncomfortable discussing the situation with your supervisor, you can talk with any other manager or supervisor or your HRBP, Human Resource Business Partner. Complaints are taken seriously and investigated. All information received in connection with inquiries or with the filing, investigation, and resolution of the workplace harassment, discrimination, and retaliation complaints is treated as highly sensitive. Employees authorized by the city to receive and investigate complaints are required to maintain confidentiality to the extent possible. It is expected and anticipated that all parties involved in the complaints will observe the same standard of sensitivity. It is emphasized that this practice is in the best interest of all parties. However, absolute confidentiality cannot be guaranteed. Additional information will be provided during the investigation process. Now let's review reporting procedures. If you witness something, you should make note of and report who, what, where, when. Complaints are investigated through a complete and supportive investigation process. During the process, you will be asked for copies of any documentation and other material pertinent to the investigation, names of witnesses, if any, 
to participate in an investigative interview, which with will be recorded to ensure a complete and accurate record. Upon completion of the investigation, you will be given additional information. If the allegation is substantiated or in part substantiated, appropriate action will be taken. You will receive a letter notifying you the investigation is closed if you are the subject or complainant. Your manager, HR, and or bureau director will evaluate your complaint and discuss options for resolution or discipline. Discipline decisions are made by the appropriate authority and will not be discussed with you. In addition, please keep in mind that what you want to see happen may not necessarily be the outcome. You may be asked to report any further acts of harassment, discrimination, or retaliation following the investigation. Please note, we will always try to take prompt, appropriate, remedial action. Our aim is to make the inappropriate behavior stop and hold offenders accountable. Thank you for completing the HR 2.02 Workforce Harassment, Discrimination, and Retaliation Prevention Training for Volunteers.